In this video, I want to discuss some recent legal changes that have transpired regarding one of the most hotly debated topics in all of veterinary medicine, and that is whether or not vets should be able to practice telehealth. I've noticed lately that I've gotten a lot of views from people who are not subscribed. I'd like to change that a little bit if I can. So please, if you liked what you see here and you enjoy watching my channel, please subscribe to it so that I can help grow the channel and make better videos, bigger videos, and more helpful videos for you and for pet owners across the world. Now let's get started with the video. I need to define one thing in particular that is paramount to this entire debate. And you'll see why in a minute. This is what's called the veterinarian client patient relationship or VCPR. I'm going to use this term a lot in this video. So it's important to first start off with this definition. A VCPR is a somewhat abstract term to represent the trust that you, the pet owner, put in someone like me, the veterinarian. The AVMA, that's the American Veterinary Medical Association, defines a VCPR as a relationship that, quote, exists when your veterinarian knows your pet well enough to to be able to diagnose and treat any medical condition your animal develops. This may seem like something of a formality, but in order for me as a vet to perform any of my duties as a veterinarian at all, I always have to first establish a veterinary client patient relationship. Only once I've established that can I practice medicine on your pet. If I don't establish that, practicing medicine on your pet is considered illegal. And rightfully so. It would be more than a little bit shady to just fire off diagnostic tests and prescribe medications and come up with treatment plans for pets that I've never even seen before. That would be a total disaster, right? Well, not always. And I'll get to that in just a second. Now, here's the most important part, according to the AVMA. A VCPR is established only when your veterinarian examines your animal in person, except in the very few states where a relationship can be established electronically. So if you're ever wondering why you have to keep dragging your pet back to the vet and can't just call the front desk to get medical advice, this is part of the reason why. Let's talk about specifically telehealth and then how these two things, telehealth and vet client patient relationships are at odds with each other in the current climate. So what is telehealth? Telehealth simply means the use of technology and communication software to deliver health information, education, or care remotely. Telehealth can be divided into multiple subcategories depending on the exact part of a medical professional's job they are including. For example, if a doctor consults with a specialist remotely about a case, that's considered teleconsulting. Side note, I actually do this. I offer a neurology consultation website and service for you. You can go here if you wish to obtain any of these services. If a doctor is monitoring something like, say, a heart rhythm on a patient with an EKG or blood glucose on a diabetic patient remotely, that would be considered telemonitoring. Then there is telemedicine. Telemedicine is a subcategory of telehealth that involves the use of a tool like, say, Zoom or FaceTime or Skype to exchange medical information electronically from one site to another to improve a patient's clinical health status. Essentially, it's practicing medicine to the full extent that you can without actually touching the patient. Now, at first glance, telemedicine seems like a huge value you add to veterinary medicine. And there's four major benefits that telemedicine has going for it, and they are as follows. The first major benefit is improving access to veterinary care. This is probably the biggest benefit to telemedicine because it completely removes all the barriers that keep pet owners from being able to see their vet, whether it be the cost, limited appointment slot availability by the veterinarian, travel factors, and other logistical factors of physically going to the vet clinic. There are many valid reasons why people simply can't make it to the vet physically. And I've often wondered this. I mean, seriously, how do we expect people to routinely come to see us in the middle of a weekday and take time away from work and their busy lives to do this. This is kind of a difficult thing for people to do, and it's no wonder they have trouble coming to see us. Second major benefit of telemedicine would be lowering the cost of veterinary visits. This one's pretty simple. Since you're only using a phone or computer of some kind, the cost of the appointment is a lot cheaper than in-person visits, generally speaking. Third major benefit of veterinary telemedicine is reducing pet fear and stress. Any person who works in vet med at any level knows how often pet are anxious and stressed at the vet clinic. Having them stay at home where they can be in a relaxed, familiar environment helps them and it helps us by not having to put staff at risk of bites and scratches and it improves our workflow because we don't have to dedicate three techs and a doctor say to tend to a super stressed out 100 pound dog. It also might be easier to spot a problem going on when an animal is relatively relaxed compared to when an animal is having their adrenaline pumping in a hospital and they might be hiding an important symptom. And the fourth major benefit of telemedicine is that it allows for pet hospice and end of life decision making to be a lot easier. Recently, pet hospice and at home euthanasia services have become a huge and super important part of veterinary medicine. Using telemedicine as a means to provide hospice care and discuss quality of 
life concerns with a client has obvious advantages over having to examine a very frail and old pet in person at a clinic. To be fair, there are some downsides to veterinary telemedicine as well. The main downside to telemedicine is that it opens the door to making a mistake that you normally wouldn't have made had you been there in person to examine the animal. This is why practicing telemedicine without a vet client patient relationship is currently illegal in most states. And that's also why there's so much pushback from the AVMA and other governing bodies keeping this from more broad acceptance. Now, at first glance, if you're like me, you might be saying to yourself, yeah, telemedicine and veterinary medicine sounds like it could be a pretty useful thing if used correctly. And you can imagine how many skin conditions and weird behaviors or seizure disorders, lameness, and other problems you can discuss with a pet owner simply by observing the pet over a video stream. But most states do not see it this way, as I alluded to earlier. And the American Veterinary Medical Association, that's the AVMA, certainly does not see it this way. According to the AVMA and most state laws, a vet client patient relationship cannot be established solely by telephonic or other electronic means. In other words, you can only establish this relationship in person. In other other words, you can't practice telemedicine on a pet you've never met and examined in person previously. But I gotta be honest, I don't necessarily agree with this position that I would consider to be kind of absolutist and dogmatic. And as we know, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Thank you, Obi-Wan Kenobi. See, the AVMA basically feels that without an in-person exam, too many mistakes can be made in regards to the diagnosis and treatment of someone's pet. And like I said previously, this is pretty much the one major con to telemedicine that is keeping it from garnering nationwide acceptance and legality. But in my opinion, there are lots of conditions pets can have that can be handled in a completely acceptable manner by telemedicine without the need of an in-person exam and a visit to a vet hospital. Let me give an example as to why, and it involves a clinical scenario that I deal with on an almost weekly basis. Let's say a client comes to see me because their pet is having weird episodes where the pet will freeze, stare into space, display a maybe a slight facial twitch, and sometimes during an episode, they momentarily hold up a limb, kind of have like a muscle cramp for a few seconds. After a few seconds of this, they're back to normal, and they have no other symptoms whatsoever. The episodes last a few seconds and occur about once every four to six weeks. Their primary vet has run a bunch of blood work, which all came back totally normal. The client reports no other prior medical history whatsoever, and the client also brought some videos of the episodes for me to review. As a neurologist, I see stuff like this all the time, and very often my physical and neurologic exam is completely normal, just like it was with their primary vet in the months preceding. All I really have to rely on here from the owner to help me with this are two things. One, the client's description of the episodes, and two, the videos that the client has of the episodes. With this information, I'm able to then discuss my thoughts, and we move forward with a plan to try, say, seizure medication to see if it helps, and we're going to reach at progress in a couple of weeks. This entire and very frequently encountered clinical scenario, I would argue, can be done faster and easier for both parties, never mind cheaper, via telemedicine. As a vet, I can charge an exam for a lower fee than an in-person exam, but still enough to compensate me for my time and expertise. And for a client, this is just way easier than having to come into an office to see me, again, during the middle of a weekday where most people have to work anyway. I would not be surprised at all if there are other clinical scenarios outside of neurology, per se, that this could apply to as well. I don't think the AVMA is taking cases like this necessarily into account. And there are just so many of them we see on a daily basis across veterinary medicine. And what's interesting Interesting too is that there are other organizations like say the ASPCA that are firmly against the AVMA stance. The ASPCA's position is that quote, licensed veterinarians should be legally and professionally empowered to determine when to use telemedicine in the practice of veterinary medicine because it has the potential to reduce animal suffering, address financial barriers, and extend the capacity of animal shelters to serve animals in the communities by increasing access to veterinary care. The ASPCA policy goes on to state that while telemedicine is not appropriate for all veterinary cases, which I totally agree with and I think everybody agrees with, we should empower vets to create VCPRs, that's the vet client patient relationship, through electronic means at the discretion of the individual vet. I gotta say, I agree with this stance much more than I do with the AVMA's stance, simply because not all cases are appropriate for pure telemedicine, but some very much are. And it is well within the ability of a veterinarian to decide which is needed for a given case. Now, aside from certain organizations some states are now starting to pass their own laws circumventing this need for a vet client patient relationship in person. In an article published in September by the AVMA, California Assembly Bill 1399, which would eliminate the need for establishing a VCPR before prescribing medication, made progress towards signature by the governor of California. California would be set to join Idaho, Arizona, and New Jersey as states that currently allow full telemedicine, again, meaning the ability to establish a VCPR electronically 
and not in person. So it seems as though California and perhaps other states are going to start passing laws that circumvent the FDA and the AVMA in regards to this issue. President of the California Vet Med Association, Keith Road, wrote in a letter to one of the California state senators who introduced the bill the following. Fact of the matter is that pet owners who for economic or other reasons have difficulty taking their animals to a veterinary practice will not be better served by veterinary telemedicine. Telemedicine only allows the veterinarian to make an educated clinical guess based on limited information when compared to a diagnosis pursuant to a physical examination of the animal patient. Thus, those who utilize only telemedicine without a recent in-person visit with a veterinarian are at risk for receiving a lower quality of care as compared to those who physically present their animal to a veterinarian. While I can see the sentiment here, I just do not agree that every single possible problem that an animal could possibly have has to require an initial in-person physical exam before any help by a vet can be provided. I already highlight highlighted one such scenario, but there are others where a physical exam doesn't really help you at all, or a simple observation of an animal is enough information to help your decisions going forward. And let me be even more frank, I've seen more than my fair share of physical exams looking something like this. And that's not to hate on anyone or call anybody out, it's just that sometimes physical exams are clearly normal, a pet has no symptoms whatsoever in the hospital, and you simply don't have time to spend 15 minutes plus evaluating every nook and cranny of a pet to make sure that every single system is in perfect perfect working order. It's just not the reality of the situation. I do think this article brings up a really good point in particular in regards to the supporters of this specific bill in California. The article states, supporters of the bill include the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the San Diego Humane Society, as well as the Virtual Veterinary Care Association. The Virtual Veterinary Care Association membership includes several pet industry companies whose business models would directly and substantially benefit from being able to establish a vet client patient relationship remotely. The AVMA is concerned about the negative impacts to animal care of companies whose focus may be more on product sales than patient care. This is a classic follow the money and follow the financial interest here. I think this is a legitimate concern. As they point out, the VVCA another acronym here. Sorry guys, a lot of acronyms in this video. The VVCA is made up of a board of directors consisting of CEOs and founders of various startup companies that all have one thing in common. Their business model would greatly benefit by expanding telemedicine. This all feels very lobbyist to me, which I'm not sure is a good thing. So do I think telemedicine without needing to establish an in-person vet client patient relationship should be allowed or not? I am currently of the opinion that yes, telemedicine should be allowed without having to establish an in-person VCPR at the discretion of each case by the veterinarian. I agree with the ASPCA stance on this. I'm not married to this position per se, but I think it just makes the most sense to let the individual veterinarian decide where telemed is appropriate or not on a case-by-case -case basis. I think about what I would do as a neurologist, and I think I could very easily determine, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, if I'm comfortable diagnosing and treating without physically examining a dog. My sense going forward is that this is going to garner more widespread acceptance, and the way that we practice veterinary medicine may change a bit in the near future. It would not surprise me at all if this followed the same trajectory as legalizing marijuana. There's probably also going to be a whole slew of new companies and services and maybe even technological breakthroughs that come as a result of this changing dogma. The AVMA tries they might, they don't seem to be able to stop states from allowing this if that's what the public wants. And from what I can tell in regards to the high demand in veterinary care lately, people are going to want this because so many pet parents are just sick of the lack of veterinarian availability lately. So what do you guys think? I'd love to hear from the vets and the vet text out there as well as the pet parents who are watching this drop me a comment below let me know what you think of telemedicine advancing in veterinary medicine if you think it's a good thing or a bad thing if you like this video please hit the like and subscribe button please subscribe to the channel to help it grow appreciate anybody watching this guys thank you very much and i'll see you on the next video